One of the real challenges in managing forests well and understanding even what a healthy forest looks like is overcoming our own biases. We have these really instinctive hang-ups about what a healthy forest looks like. Pretty much everybody thinks it looks like a park with these big evenly spaced trees and nothing in the understory, which is actually almost the opposite of what a healthy forest actually looks like. We have a bias against messiness, which is really just what we would call from an ecological perspective, complexity, things like deadwood on the ground, different sizes and ages of trees, gaps in the forest canopy. We have a real bias against death, this actually profound and incredibly important process of tree mortality, which is foundational to the function of our forests and also just towards change. Something that has led people to really misunderstand forests is this idea of mycorrhizal fungi and the wood wide web. So mycorrhizal, myco meaning mushroom, rhizal meaning root, mycorrhizal fungi are these soil fungi that have relationships with trees. So they'll connect the root system of a tree, they'll help trees uptake water and nutrients from the soil, and the tree will often give them sugars, photosynthate, uh, in return, and they can have this mutualistic relationship. And we can even see the same soil fungi bridging the root systems of different trees. The idea of the wood wide web originated from this idea that trees were connected through their root systems, mediated by this mycorrhizal fungi, and that those connections were passing nutrients between trees. Subsequent studies showed that trees in the sun were passing nutrients to trees in the shade, that trees could recognize their own kin and share nutrients preferentially through that mycorrhizal network and a number of other really amazing attributes. This idea of the wood wide web led to a lot of misunderstandings about how forests work, casting them as these entirely altruistic places, these utopian societies where trees were entirely cooperative. Recently, a group of scientists did a literature review of the studies related to mycorrhizal networks and they found that this bias towards the concept of the wood wide web was not just in the public narrative, but actually extended to scientists as well. They saw that a lot of these important studies that are sort of foundational to this idea of the wood wide web, people were citing them, but they weren't citing in that same study where the scientists were saying, well, we think that these things are happening as the result of these mycorrhizal networks, but actually they could be related to X, Y, and Z, a number of other alternate explanations. As those citations were carried forward, people were continually citing those papers without reading those papers and expressing those same caveats. So what these scientists basically found is that most of what we thought we knew about mycorrhizal fungi is actually not known. That some of these things could be true, but that the studies that are cited as proving them actually don't prove that they're true. It has been really fascinating to listen to the authors of this literature review talk about it. One of the things they say is that you know, this may seem really disheartening to all of us who have gotten really excited about this idea of the wood wide web, but this is not a bad thing. This is part of the scientific process. That we're constantly making sure that we actually know the things that we know and trying to present the best information possible to the public and to people who are doing things like managing forests. The other thing that these scientists have said is that actually, while this question of is there a wood wide web, are trees communicating through it, are trees sharing resources through it, while that's a really exciting idea, it's actually less important than a lot of other things. It's less important than if our forests are climate resilient, if they're healthy, if they have the tools to respond to the many threats and stressors of global change, if they're providing habitat for all of our native flora and fauna and protecting our biodiversity more broadly, if they're intact and connected and unfragmented. The example of mycorrhizal networks and the wood wide web is another really good example of how in order to manage forests well and to understand them, we really need to put aside our own biases. To accept that these systems were not created to appeal to us. They're not supposed to look nice to us. They're not supposed to be pleasant or easily understandable or unchallenging to us. They are what they are, and it's up to us to meet them there and to do the things necessary to protect them.